Welcome back, everyone. We've got round one pairings. Starting out with Chris Ioli on Kasai mm. versus Talon Stradley on Riptide. Talon, absolutely insane good Riptide player. I've played against this guy. Actually, it was um, down at the, I want to say at the, call, the Pro Tour yep. Los Angeles. I just happened to get paired against his, ta his Riptide in a... Uh, Triple-headed dragon, is that the correct name for that format? Oh, was it the Team Blitz? The Team Blitz, excuse yeah, okay. me. I played him in Team Blitz and he destroyed me. And <laughs> uh, I just, I have a lot of respect for his Riptide play. Very, very knowledgeable. And he was just telling me about how when that hero came out, he fell in love with it and mm. hasn't played anything since then. So he's probably one of the best Riptide players in Southern California, if not yeah. in the world. I haven't seen any other personally that are as good as he is. So... He's awesome. And then, of course, we've got our reigning champion from last AGE, last month, Chris Ioli. Mm. Today, he will be playing Kasai, which is, I don't know, uh, he's been kind of hopping between heroes, but with a man of this talent, he can do that. He can he can just pick up anyone and maybe pilot them all the way to the top again. Uh, unfortunately, he was not forced to choose this one, as far as I know, through a bet. So maybe not as likely when he's picking his own heroes. I hear he doesn't do quite as well. Yeah, he probably should have left it to the Ducks this time yep. as well. But, you know, maybe he can make it work. Yeah, and, <laughs> and of course, Chris Ioli, very decorated player. I think his best accolade being uh, runner-up at runner Worlds up 2022. At Worlds. Thank yeah. you. 2022, that's the year that I was hoping you would tell me. Worlds number one, baby. There we go. Awesome. And here they are on your screen, just getting ready for the game to begin. Mm. And we've got... Great. Okay, that's excellent. Yeah, if there's anyone that knows Riptide inside and out, it's Talon. Absolutely. I've played him multiple times. We talk about the minutiae of the hero. It's very good. Yep. Um, he basically exclusively plays the Dreadball, like sure. actual fatigue version, which I appreciate because I prefer that way. <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. what I'm in for. If they whip out Death Dealer, I'm like, oh, no. Yep. And there's the Dreadball. So we've got uh, Bo here. Tell me a little bit about what Dreadball does and why it's a good choice into Kasai. Okay, so... Dreadball allows you to prevent your opponent from playing defense reactions from hand. Plus, any arrows you load with its um, bow ability get plus one when loaded face up. Okay. So you attach a break point that people don't expect sometimes out of Ranger. Um, you're down the card neutrality from Death Dealer, of course, but like that one damage, <coughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, and the, the really important thing is... Yeah, that it prevents defense reactions from being played from hand, and Kasai loves playing defense reactions. Absolutely. And even more than defense reactions, attack reactions. Yep. So getting into the game, I believe this is turn zero. We've got a uh, Ravenous Rabble. I'm, I'm actually not sure if this is turn zero or turn one, but he's playing all his cards out, which leads me to believe this is turn one. Mm. Nope. And a full block. Okay. Okay. So now we start the game. No, yeah, that was turn. That was Chris's turn zero. Okay, great. So draws back up. We've got uh, looks like a blue over power in hand, mm. and we're just gonna kind of figure out what to do with slice this and dice, a blade here. runner, everything he wants. Yep. Playing out the red slice and dice. Four value. First attack gets plus one. Second attack gets plus three. We'll see what Talon decides to do here after the attack comes through. So the nice thing about this matchup that Talon has mentioned on his player profile is that Kasai is going to use a lot of pumps and is going to use a lot of go again. So it's ticking all those boxes for Riptide. So those one pings are going to start stacking plentifully. Yep. Centauri Saber coming in for three damage. And a red Blade Runner giving it go again. And his next attack Ooh, will have we plus three. Ah, but what is this? A tar pit trap? Tar pit indeed. Pings for one. Chris can't prevent that. All right. Takes one damage. And this attack does have go again. Is that the trigger on tar pit? Yeah. And this follow-up one shall be eight. Because it's Blade Runner and Slice and Dice. Yep. Coming in for eight. No one hits. Just a vanilla eight. Talon isn't too concerned with the on hits most of the time, apart from Kasai activations and copper generators, but 
the one damage ping is definitely the game plan. The reason you play the hero. So he's happy to get that chip whenever he likes. Oh, and he blocks with an attack, which pumps the Centauri up to nine. Interesting. So he will take six damage on that attack. As Chris arsenals and ends his turn. Mm -hmm. Probably a card Talon wasn't able to use on that cycle. So, oh, that should be fine. Okay. Oh, he Pitches did. to the Battering Bolt. Mm. This is six damage. And I'm not sure what the text says on that. Do oh, you know that okay. one? <laughs> it's not going to connect regardless, but it looks for everything that isn't an action okay. and discards it if it hit. So quite mean into Warrior, but given that Chris could block it evenly with two cards because this wasn't loaded in with Dreadbore, um, no problem for an easy two-card hand. Okay. We've just got a Centauri Saber for two coming in. Blocking with the vir Virulent Touch. Yeah, brings it to a three. And another red Blade Runner. Two of his most powerful attack reactions we're seeing here early. Great start for Chris. Mm -hmm. And another five. Yeah, decent damage coming through. Talon, a little bit of an awkward hand. Remembrance yep. and Endless. Is that two Endless? Yeah. So he'll give one of those up, pumping yeah. the Centauri up to six, taking three damage. Great start for Chris. Already at a 10 life lead. So I guess we're seeing some of the problem with playing the taller deck as Riptide is that unfortunately, sometimes you're just going to have like a bunch of arrows in hand. And this is really bad into Kasai because yep. then they get that incremental one value per weapon swing that you have to block them with. Right. Yeah, we haven't seen him punish Chris yet for the go against. I know that Talon, or rather Riptide, is very good at punishing players who have additional text on their attacks. If they have mm. go again, or if they've gained attack, there's a lot of things that Riptide can do to punish you for doing that. Absolutely. So we have Endless Arrows coming in for five, loaded with the Dreadbore, which means that Chris can't use defense reactions from hand and looking at his hand. We'll try to see if he has any. Outland Skirmish. Oh, those are reactions. Like so this is exactly what I was talking about, where Chris isn't able to utilize dynamos efficiently when Talon loads in an arrow because of that plus one breakpoint. Right. Because if it was any, if it was a zero arrow that didn't have Dreadbore in the equation, it's simply just like a card. Sure. And dynamos. So he opted to give up two cards, but exactly. did not get the dynamos value. Exactly. And we've got it coming back again. Two Centauri Saber for two. This time, blue Blade Runner pumping the next no one mm -hmm. by one. And he uses his Tunic resource to send that second as attack, hit the second Centauri Saber coming in for three. Mm. This time we have a defense react. This is an inertia trap. Yeah, this is really good because though Chris held on to the card for Arsenal, it's going to get denied to inertia. So Yeah. This says when this defends an attack action with attack greater than its base, create an inertia token under the attacking hero's control. So... I'm sorry, an attack with attack raider, which Centauri was. Mm. So he gets an inertia, and he cannot keep an arsenal after that. Pre-med from Talon into a ravenous rabble. Unfortunately, his flips are yellow, so it gets a minus two. Ravenous coming in for three because of that. Mm. The good thing here about playing the pre-med first is that he gets the reload from Riptide, but... Um, in addition to that, even though this is just a measly three, a head jab or a ravenous rabble, it still threatens the on-hit of pre-med. Yep. That is a good point. So far, I haven't seen any defense reactions on in Chris's hand. I wonder if he... He might have just sided them all out, yep. yeah. Thought about the Dreadbore and decided not to bring anything in. Okay, so this is a really good little play. We've got Codex from Talon breaking up the chain. And this will force a discard out of Chris. Yep, Chris discarding. To him. I couldn't see what he discarded, but it looked like he grabbed a Nourishing Emptiness. Mm. Fantastic attack. Ooh. One of the best that you can do in Kasai is when it hits. Mm. Gives you plus one intellect for the following turn, allowing you to draw up to five cards instead of the Talon top four. Actually opting to get his back, his Virulent Touch. Oh, interesting. Okay. So he only runs one of this card, and it's because of how good of a target it is for the Codex. 
says if you don't block this, it deals four. If you do block this, it's no, still... No, it's, it's, it's the inverse. It cares about being blocked. Right, so the base attack is four. Yeah. But then if you decide to block it, it'll still do four. Mm. Well, it'll still do something. And this time it's coming in for seven things. Yeah, because the pre-meds on hit. Yeah. Or the pre-meds text was right. delayed. Only from, from Arsenal. Mm. Right? It gives, it gives plus three. So block seven from Chris, preventing the on hit. But ah, using a shunt. Yeah. Yep. And that's because Chris was able to play the shunt out of hand. Yeah. Because this wasn't an, an arrow. This was just an attack action card. Mm-hmm. So Chris will just go ahead and pass the turn, drawing up, giving Talon mm. full tempo, a five-card hand to work with. Yeah, interesting. I, I guess Chris didn't want to send the nourishing for just the five because he was under a frailty, and like sabers are out of the question. Yep. It's pretty poor to be missing two damage off both um, the weapon swings in total. So just sending a, what is that, a remorseless? Yeah. For six. Interesting. Not the greatest. Riptide can sometimes struggle to s to utilize five-card hands thanks to all the D-reacts that yeah. he tends to play. And it looks like he had a couple in hand, which clogged him up there, not being able to utilize as much tempo as he would have liked to. I think that's what Chris was counting on, yep. and now he sends the nourishing for the full value of six yeah. dominate. Six dominate, and if it hits... He will gain an intellect. And most importantly, he's got a sink below to put an arsenal so he doesn't have to play around Dreadball for the next turn. Yep. So it looks like he did bring some defense reacts. But Talon came prepared. Doesn't matter that he won't ship to Riptide. Uh, Chris will stick with the four card hand. Yep. Full block from Talon. Ooh, pitching a play, Kaif. Okay. We'll take the dice out. Putting and that on see the stack kind with of Dreadball, yes. Yep. Play, Kaif. Is an interesting... He definitely wants the frailty. Inertia can be helpful. Yeah, so this card, for those of you who don't know, is a legendary... Well, it's a fabled and a legendary, which means that you can only have one copy in your deck. When you pitch it, for each opposing hero, choose Inertia, Frailty, or Blood Rod Pox token at random and create that token under their control. Mm. So it looks like he got the Inertia token off of that die roll randomly, which is a pretty good hit for Plague Hive. He definitely wants as many frailty tokens in this matchup because each copy is at least two value. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the Centauri Sabres being affected by that as well as the Arsenal means two to three value. But yeah. the Inertia, you know, we're not really upset about any of them. Inertia is probably the worst option, like you said. Um, in certain matchups, Inertia is actually the best, but yes. this is not one. I given see. that Chris is on Warrior. Okay. So Chris just thinking a little bit about what to block with. We see he's got two go-again sources and an attack reaction that cares about reprise. Mm. And another attack reaction. So pretty good hand to send. Iron Song, pitch, lead the tide. Oh. There isn't a, a proper go-again source in this hand. Because shift the tide requires something to be better than its base. True. So he may not. And he, oh, oh, I guess there's glint, but glint doesn't get as much value. Yeah. Um, because the card draw is entirely tied to reprise. I've noticed Talon avoiding blocking that first attack. Mm. So, just a sink below, allowing one damage to sink through, and he decides to get rid of one of the cards in his hand. I didn't see which one. Okay. Likely. Talon gets you the option to reload, but I think he has opted to just pass. Yep. Yeah, he's cleaning up. Okay. So it looks like he got rid of the blue. Looking for something a little bit better. Starts with activating Kasai's hero ability. Kasai's hero ability says that if you banish a yellow, sorry, two yellows and two reds from your graveyard, the next weapon attack that hits will create a gold token, which is a huge deal for Kasai. She really wants to build up those gold tokens because of the other part of her text, which says, if you've drawn a card this turn, your sword attacks are mm. free. Actually, I think it's just one less, but in this case, they cost one, so free. Okay. Starting off with plus three 
create a copper on a hit, Outland Skirmish. Copper and gold here, yeah. So he was able to find that pump, like you mentioned, with the sink below, which means that his Shift the Tide of Battles is online if he decides to use that. Mm. And this prompts six block and six attack. Chris is going to respond with Iron Song. Pumping it up to nine. Another Does hand, Talon I think. Does have a D-React response? Yeah. Does not appear that way at the moment. So he gets... Ah, there it is. Oh, no. He went with Boulder, Boulder Drop. Drop. Wh and what does this one do? Do you know? The, this one cares if something has power greater than its base. And so he gets to place a minus one counter on a piece of a opponent's opponent. Ah, very so good. He puts that on the Brave Forge, which is really good. So he gets two value out of that counter. So Absolutely. He would have otherwise been able to block for two. And then one, now he can only block for one, one mm. time. Interesting. Talon says, I will sink below instead. Okay. Um, Chris did manage to use all of his cards, but unluckily did not hit, did not connect. Yep. Was also threatening an agility if he hit with the other saber, but Talon came prepared. Yeah. And also has a one card retort in Endless. Yep. Sending in that zero for four that says, if this hits, put it back in your hand. It's like a snatch that draws a snatch, is how I've seen it described. Three block two, very strong card in range. Three block snatch. Yep. Chris Ayali has the boots available, those valiant dynamos. So the breakpoint won't be very threatening as no. he reaches over to grab them. It's a bit of an awkward hand for Chris because yes. he holds both a shun. Though Tunic is on one, he holds Shunt and a, a Fate, so... Right. Ooh, giving a block of blood on her hands. Yeah, no copper right now, so blocking with blood on her hands seems like the right choice. Not very useful at this point in the match. Something I've noticed is that we've started to claw back that life lead. It used to be 10, and Talon hasn't really moved from 26 since I mentioned that. No, that's true. Yep. Chris now swinging two attack on this Antari Saber, two cards in hand. Talon says no blocks. Chris elected to just keep go again, Source. Okay. Because so he would have spent all three, no, not all three cards, but he would have had to spend his Tunic resource as well mm -hmm. to just peel off Dynamos and swing five, which isn't incredible. Okay. It's like rate slash just below rate. I see. It's not what you want to be doing. So Chris played it patient. And it looks like Talon is... Interestingly, he's made use of New Horizons here. Yeah, he just, did he just pass? He, he filled up his arsenal. He's got mm -hmm. a six-card hand now, and he recognized that Chris Ioli kept two cards in hand, probably seeing two D-Reacts and saying, let's see what your five-card hand looks like. Chris drew another one. I don't know if he has very much gas this turn. Pitching the sink below for a vanilla oh, another sink below two attack. Oh, my gosh. Chris... His hands are bricking. All of a sudden, he's drawing all of his... Oh, dear. React. That's an internet penalty of yeah. about three. <laughs> oh. And we're seeing Talon with his six-card hand just absolutely getting everything he could possibly want. Oh, interesting. Tr Not punished at Trenching all. in Chris's end phase. Yep. So he's a plan probably to load something into Dreadborn now so that he can set up Sikkim Shot with another arrow. Pitching a red. Interesting. And the Sikkim shot just has natural go again, right? It's a one for four arrow, yeah. so he'll be able to play both yeah, of these yeah. if this he has the resources. Blue. Ooh, spiteful trap. Coming in for four, go again. So we've had a little bit of a, a back and forth where either player has said, no, I know you have reactions, mm -hmm. so I'm going to give it back to you, and then you get to pitch away your defense reactions yep. as well. Yep. A little bit of a clunky moment as they both sort of try to navigate as best as they can these hands that don't really operate very well on offense. Mm. Now mm. Chris thinking about how to block. Let's take a peek at his hand. That's what a great Chris idea. To work with? He wants to hide it even I from think us. he's still got that sink below. Uh-huh. But he opts to take this. Yeah. Oh, he can't play the sink below from no, hand. No, he can't. He and pitched one away. He held two. Which so was it must mean he has the, sh the, the shunt in his arsenal. It's probably saving it for the battering bolt. Oh, no, 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 no. He um he pitched away his shunt. He's got a fate oh, okay. foreseen in arsenal. Fate foreseen in arsenal. Why do you think he opted not to use it? 
I think he wants to utilize Tunic offensively to squeeze a bit more damage. Okay. Because he's seen and recognized that Talon has let him hit on some sabers. Yeah. So that he can potentially sink that one resource into Brayforge. Okay. On some terms. Um, and, you know, Shunt is an investment and it's made incredibly awkward. Similar to Staunch Response against Riptide, like, it costs you more than one card to do a defense reaction, so mm -hmm. it's always two cards. Um, in Shunt's case, you need Tunic as well if you want to make it a one yeah. card, but... So getting good value on those last couple blocks. Sink Below mm -hmm. from Arsenal, followed by seven block, one D React from Arsenal, playing around the Dread Bar as well as a three block, blocking seven. Clean block there from Chris. Alan immediately ponders and pockets it to Arsenal, and we go to the next turn. So Talon playing the defensive game, trying to get value out of his traps. Still a little bit behind, but very Saber close. Saber for all one. All. <laughs> Saber for one because of that frailty token. Chris says no reactions. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Chris is ground to a halt here. Like mm -hmm. Talon's been shipped maybe five life in the past. Yeah. Chris is really having trouble punching through. I'm curious what the number of cards left in deck. They're both looking very healthy, but if mm. this comes down to... Oh, this fatigue. is pretty nasty. A premeditate packed with a heat seeker. This is a Lexi hand. Because this on here is um, threatening to put a card face up for Talon and Ponder. So... Chris staring down a possible six-card hand from Talon next turn. Yep, nine damage, two on hits to worry about. Both of them very powerful. And part of me wants to say Chris saw this coming because he's got his Lexi Livewire sleeves for the Lexi-threatened hand here. Chris thinking over his blocks. Blocking with two reactions from hand. Oh, okay. An additional piece of armor and ah, he's gonna take it, it on the chin. Okay, this is really good. Yeah, Talon says no reactions. Brayforge is gone now. It only ever gave him one health, but it did matter there. Chin allows Chris to do the one card f four if not one card five um, with a Brave Forge activation. And it looks like he'll do just that. Coming in with the Centauri Saber for two with an agility, so it has go again. Mm -hmm. See what Talon decides to do. Okay, he holds a Ravenous Rabble. It looks like a yellow trap there. Does he have a trap in Arsenal? I'm going to say no blocks. Taking two. Chris will come in with his second Centauri Saber. Oh, unless there is the Brave Four Bracers. So one card five, pretty good. Coming in for three. See, as efficient as this play is, it doesn't really make up for all the lost value he had from previous turns, like a Saber Swing and pass, and then another Saber Swing and pass. It looks like we see a Pendulum Trap blocking. Mm. When this defends the attacking, and the attacking hero has played or activated a reaction, this chain, which he did not. Mm. So it was not active. It was just blocking this turn. Yep. It says, put the top two cards of their deck into their graveyard. Not active on that block. Coming in for Ravenous Rabble for four, showing a blue, so it's actually for two. This is my experience with Ravenous Rabble. Yep. Two go Only again. reveal my blues. My reds are in the next hand, and it's one one turn too late. Unfortunate for Talon. Oh, interesting. Chris blocking with a hold the line. Not probably a card that will ever be active in this matchup. So I was going to say, uh, it, it's just part of the blue base. Yep. So. Just get it out of hand when you've got the opportunity. It's a clean two for two. Might as well use it. And it's actually the only time you can use it from hand because it's a generic attack action and not an arrow. Yep. Pitching a trap for Remorseless, coming in for six. Uh, if Talon just loaded that, I would have thought he'd be floating one, but that's okay. That's the end of the turn. 
Yep, maybe just playing a little quick, they all know what they're doing here. Chris Pitching says Saber for two. His raise the army. This could matter coming around second cycle. So far, no gold. In fact, playing with the Crown of Providence, which is maybe a little bit less common than the Crown of Dominion for Kasai's. Mm. So something to note about how we're seeing this matchup play out is that because Chris chose to play Tunic, on all these turns where he's made like a single Saber Swing and passed, he's left value on the table because if he was playing Grains, he can put that extra value printed on the card that he can't use with go agains mm -hmm. because he's making a one card play. He can't put that into a Vigor resource. So, right. unfortunate. His, his Tunic has sat doing not a lot. Plus it's, you know, three health at the end of the day. That doesn't mean nothing into Rangers. True. A third copy of Battering Bolt making its way to Chris Iali's face. Seven damage. We've got the Valiant Dynamo, so an easy breakpoint to cover with just the armor. Chris just thinking about what he wants to put down. Is that a... Is he reaching for a blade for it? It's a flurry and a uh, nourishing. Okay. Still not sure. Maybe thinking he'd rather get four value of that card if he can. The problem with saying I want to get four value out of Blade Flurry is that you open yourself up to another set of traps because mm. you're above base. See, this is what makes the good players separated <laughs> from the great. Hey, it's from playing like a, a bunch of Riptide uh, where I'm sat across from Talon. Mm -hmm. Because he's caught me with... Uh, Collapsing trap on Arouse the Ancients, and I had no blue to follow up because he took the last card out of hand. Here we've got a Spoils of War coming in for four. Now, th this is something that I would have loved to see paired with the Blade Flurry. I can see why he didn't, because he's got a Remembrance in his hand, so there's no way to block with that Remembrance. But I'm sure Chris Ooh. would have preferred to get some copper on this. Oh, just just a, a take cover. Okay. I'm threatening the same thing, but for two. Take cover, defense react cost zero, and says reload. Not a common card that I see played in Ranger, allowing him to put a card into his arsenal if he does not have mm. one already. Unfortunate that Talon couldn't afford to let the breakpoint bleed and get Inertia Trap's full value, mm -hmm. because that would have put the Remembrance to the bottom of Chris's deck. But now, from Talon's point of view, oh no, my opponent's got an arsenal and I had to cover up the copper, but yeah. yeah he goes ahead and remembrance of his own. Two codex, one battering bolt. Three very powerful cards. I mean considering how many times he threw battering bolt this game thus far doing the work. Yep. He'll just shuffle up here. How do you feel this match is going so far? We're back to that ten life difference. Can we tell right now who's got the advantage? I mean, let's 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 be real with what we see on the table right now. Uh, Chris has no gold. Chris yeah. has not a single copper to his name. Mm -hmm. He hasn't connected at all. Talon's made it difficult. Both of the players have experienced odd, sloppy hands in first cycle. Yeah. So it sounds like the life total isn't telling the whole story, although... If Talon gets too low, he may be put into situations that he struggles to get out of. Mm. I haven't seen this matchup a whole lot, so I'm looking forward to seeing how this game kind of wraps up. I don't know much about this. Chris has got three cards to work with in that Remembrance. So he has the Remembrance in Arsenal. Mm. Maybe just saving that for some kind of... Uh, play if his arsenal gets targeted he can use it at instant speed that's very true pitching another red coming in for just two damage on the centauri saber mm. talon's life is getting low enough to where he starts to feel like he needs to block these pumping it up to three which also activates the reprise chris ayali should be playing that glint the quicksilver which because of this blocking card will allow him to draw a card in addition to giving this Centauri Saber go again. That's very true. He He's wants to peel the Dynamo counters off. Yep. And there it is. Drawing a card. Looks like he draws a in-the-swing red. That's good. Yep. Allows him to 
pump this second attack if he chooses to. Coming in for two. Yeah, you do need says to, no blocks. You, you and do need to... Oh, pardon me. He does not need to pay for that because he drew a card this turn. Right. He doesn't have to give Tunic. He doesn't have to give up a card. So Glint the Quicksilver, really a fantastic card in Kasai for that reason. Covers the additional resource he needed for that. Oh, and there we go. He has to remember that so he can put his fate for scene on Arsenal. There you go. So probably wants to shuffle a few... I'm interested cards. to see what he chooses. Probably like spoils, actually, to get some copper. Yep, there's oh, the spoils. It. Good call on that one. I don't know if he's chucked any other copies in there. He's just not... Yeah, I I've only deck. seen... No, there's one. Okay. Did he block with that earlier? Oh, that was his turn zero block. Turn zero, okay. Great. So he gets his two spoils, really hoping to connect with that so that he can have the gas to get over and kill Talon when... He's got enough copper for a good, strong blood on her hands turn. He's also got a blade flurry he can count on later into the cycle because he's pitched it here on this turn. Yep. But that was more so that he he was kind of forced to. Yeah. He needed to uh, free up the arsenal to put the reaction there instead. He got an interesting opening with the in the swing to push more damage, I think, than Talon was expecting. Life lead now 14 to 29. Yeah, he definitely widened the life gulf yep. now, which is good. Good if you're Chris, bad if you're Talon. Let's see how Talon plays this turn out. Loading up with the Dreadbore, shooting bolt, bolt and shot. shot. Threatening a reload. Walk Five damage go five. again because it has gained attack power. Chris with the whirlwind block saying, I was prepared, buddy. I have a fate for scene. Preventing the reload. You want Outland Skirmish, he sees there. Does he want that? No, he keeps it there. Oh. Another Codex. Codex. It's really biting in this grind. Yeah, the frailty token is a huge deal here, as you mentioned earlier. Going to reduce the amount of damage that these sabers do next turn by one each. Really putting a damper on the offensive potential. I think this Kasai player. Considering Talon has one still engraved, did he choose Battering Bolt? I did not see it. I'll take your word for it. Is he it has it? two floating, right? So no, we, we switched to Chris's hand. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is exactly what yep. I thought. Yeah. Chris will chuck away the sink below because uh -huh. it's in hand, it'll do nothing. Yep. It'll get discarded and lose him one life. Might as well discard it now. Sure. Coming in for six. Did not load this with the Dreadbore, so no plus one counter on this battering bolt. Chris remembering the um, Remember remembrance. Remember this is banished. Thank you, Vlad B, for finding that in the chat. Blocking six. Chris is one of those players who seems to really value his life total. I've noticed he likes to block a lot and just play this slow, conservative game. Mm. And you can see here he's just swinging for one. Chris is no stranger to the hands where you definitely fold them versus hold them. Yep. It's all about knowing... What is the maximum? What is the what the floor is, what the ceiling is? Something I'm noticing here is even though there was a frailty and he only swung for one damage, he's still doing damage to Talon, whereas Talon hasn't really been able to break through a lot. It's true. So over the course of this game, it's just been a lot of chip damage that Talon doesn't feel as efficient to stop. Now we get to talk about one of my favorite topics when it comes to damage is deck damage. Mm-hmm. Starting to see these decks thin out a little bit. Yeah, I think Chris's discard pile is looking a little a little close to what his actual library is looking like. Mm -hmm. So Talon leading on some of that deck damage and Yeah, maybe if we kinda switch the camera over Oh okay, what's happening? Let's do this hand cam. Yeah. So we can see a little bit better. Wow. Yeah. I th it looks like Chris has a lot fewer cards in his deck. If we see to camera left, it could be Talon's the... giant pile <laughs> versus Chris's right. little stack. I'm going to see this if point. we can see switching over to the left over here. 
It's, it's hard to tell. And you never know because the sleeves could be thicker on one player or the other. But something to keep our eye on as the game progresses is it's not just the life totals that matter in every game. As Chris activates Kasai ability, mm -hmm. threatening gold, and one... Oh, I'm sorry. Those are banished. Or No, they're not. He is playing those. So threatening one gold and three copper on mm. this first Centauri Saber hit. And if it does not hit... And this on is the second hit, as this well. Is a hit for seven here. Break point. This is this is going to be difficult to stop. Hopefully, Talon's got the defensive reactions that he needs to put a damper on this play because this play, if it connects, could be huge mm. for Chris. Well, I think I see. Is that trip wire trap or is that falcon wing? I think I see the word trap at the end of it. Oh, the Ooh. buzz saw. Buzz saw Aim trap. at the worst time. So tell me, what does buzz saw trap do? So buzz saw cares also about things being higher than their base. This is a killer against Rouse the Ancients or anything that you pummel. But in, in this case, shrunk the saber all the way down to two. Yep. Chris spent two cards. When they this basically get nullified by one. When this defends an attack with power greater than its base, the attack can't gain attack this turn. Its attack becomes its base. So, yeah, going from seven to two. Mm, absolutely. And that gave the opportunity for Talon to put the... Uh, I, I, right, I was right. It was trip by trap. Yep. Put that into Arsenal because the Crucible trap can only be played from Arsenal. Put it there. Play it on the chain. One of the strongest turns Chris has presented thus far turned into him taking two damage. Mm. And Talon does another Arsenal pass. So this is what Talon wants to be doing. He wants to be getting that value from his defense reactions, although... Mm. He's also consulting his own graveyard. He's mm -hmm. checking what traps he's already seen, checking what arrows are there. Scoping out the codex targets because he's still got plenty in there from the one remembrance. Chris doing the same, just looking through, seeing what kinds of threats he has to worry about in the remainder of this game. Just past 20 minutes left, or just under, rather. Yeah. We've got plenty of time in this first Swiss round, but it's feeling a bit more like Chris's game to lose. Just solving the equation of how do I actually close this, given that I hold 14 life over you, but I'm running out of cards versus you. It's a marathon, not a sprint this round. Exactly. As Kasai faces down the Riptide. Another Kasai activation. Banishing two reds, two yellows. Hoping. No, you can't banish that, Chris. That's a blue. There we go. Hoping he can... Oh, there we go. That's one. He's got yellow. enough legal targets. Yeah, okay. There it is. Keeping a blood on her hands in his grave, should he want to remembrance that. And here comes... That spoils of war that he remembered back into his deck. The second copy now. Mm. Let's try this time. Can we have gold? Can we have some copper? Four power. Definitely no buzz saw trap this time, as that card is a legendary, meaning you can only have one copy of it in your deck. Talon, Talon seems very prepared. He says, go straight to reactions. Ooh. <laughs> this is one of my favorite traps, honestly. Frail Frailty? Frailty? Its use cases are so plentiful because action points are probably the most common thing you find in Fab. Mm -hmm. And weapon swings with action points. Yes. So when this Blow defends this an attack with go again, create a frailty token under the attacking hero's control, which is fantastic in this spot because that frailty, mm. as it comes into play, will reduce the damage of that Centauri Saber back down to three. Absolutely. Allowing frailty's three block to cover it up completely. Very efficient play and... That frailty now affects the next Centauri Saber attack as well. Coming in for three off of a... Ooh, and another, another tripwire trap. Chris will get pinged one. Does he want to give up that card in hand to dodge the two damage? He loves his life. He may... He plays no, the attack reaction. I think, I think he accepts it because... Yep. Pumping it up. Three extra power. Yeah. Three and power versus two damage. Let's see if Talon has. He does not. So Chris getting his first copper this game. 
Two is not a lot, but it's less than zero. Talon taking three more damage, going down to 11 life. Mm. As we clean up this turn, Chris also taking two damage because of the activation of Riptide's ability on those defense reactions, which can't really be prevented without some kind of special effect like take it on the chin. And here we have, this is called Headshot, I believe. Ooh. Yeah, this is a, just a really good two card seven. Yep. If Headshot is put into your arsenal face up, it gains plus two until end of turn, which it looks like it was. So, so when you pitch yellow, you have it red ball, two card seven. Fantastic. Beautiful art on this card as well. Just this arrow going straight through this guy's eye. A lot of blood. I love seeing blood. Flesh and blood loves blood. It's, it really does. <laughs> I have fond memories of opening that card. And it looks day. like uh, we've got a comment in the chat. No copper due to tripwire. That is correct. Very good I was good thinking catch. of a different trap. Tripwire trap. Let's see what that one does. Tripwire is the red and it's four. But unless you pay the one resource cost... Effects, effects do don't not. trigger when an attack hits. So not only did he deal one damage, he prevented the copper. What a fantastic play from Talon. It's honestly a huge value swing, denying yep. all of that. And Probably, yeah. still enough life to work with. I think the one thing to consider, even though there is a 10 life gap, a lot of these hits that Talon has taken, he's taken by choice. He's using his life as a resource. Once mm. it gets a little bit lower, he won't have that luxury. But... He doesn't seem too phased by this life gap right now as he is. He's also in such a favorable position, like when you say he's using his life as a resource, because he has all of his equipment. Yep. He has perch grapplers. He has new horizons when he wants to cash um, that in. So Chris trying once again to make something, some copper. Command and conquer, blocking, pushing the Centauri up to six, Ooh. and then a blade fl flurry, pushing it up to eight as a reaction. Let's see mm. if Talon has a response in hand, thinking about I wonder. how he wants to do this. Ooh. He gives another Ooh. frailty trap. So dropping that Brings power to down seven. to seven, blocking six. So it looks like one damage will this is the sneak the first gold through. Chris has made in 40 one minutes. One gold, one copper. Unless, oh. wow. We so spoke too soon. He plays a, is that a tar pit trap or a no, tripwire? This is pitfall trap. Pitfall, okay. Pitfall this is the trap. one that deals damage. Okay. It only defends for three, but it's a yellow. Uh-huh. So he decides to use an entire card to cover up really valuing preventing that gold and copper, mm. plus dealing some more damage on the back end. When this defends, deal two damage to the attacking hero unless they pay one. It looks like he went ahead and, well, he's thinking about as it resolves. We'll see if he pays the one. And he no, takes he, he, three he from that trap. He, he takes the full three because it's one ping from Riptide yep. and it's two from Pitfall if you don't pay. Wow. It's very good. Coming in for three. Here. I oh, almost okay. would have expected Chris to... Mm, oh, I and see. there's the Perch Grapplers. So he's blocking five on that with only three coming in. I guess it would have pumped it to four. So yeah. he's just saying, I don't want you to have any gold. I don't exactly. want you to have any copper. Keep starving this guy of the resources. I wonder if he's got the one card codex. I wonder. Or if he's just going to go straight to end. There we go. Okay. Oh, thank you, Bagel TCG. Great coverage, by the way. Enjoying this more than the calling stream. Is the calling Warsaw not, not too great? I saw some of the talent that they have behind it. So I think... Uh, Roman from France is covering that. I think I, like I think I think we might just be phenomenal. <laughs> I'm sure they're great and we're just, you know, Bagel TCG, very great guy, has his own YouTube channel for those of you who don't know. Yeah. Puts out content. Go oh, they check had it some out. Audio issues. Oh, some audio issues. We still have time. Let's not let's not think that we're perfect over here. But we've got Chris I Ollie pitching a blue now, coming in with nourishing emptiness. This is mm. I think gonna have dominate. I haven't seen his graveyard. He's looking through to make sure. He banished the other one yonks ago. One of the beautiful things about the Kasai activation is that it will allow you to banish attack actions from your card, which allows this to continue to see no attack actions in graveyard, which allows it to have that activation dominate. And if it hits, plus one intellect. Oh, here we go. 
Talon using the trench of sunken treasures to gain a resource and bottom that arsenal. So he didn't have a reaction or anything in arsenal. He probably had an arrow. Going or ahead a non attack action. Putting take cover. Take Fox cover. Ripside. Yep. So reloading, which, as you know, allows it to get around dominate, putting that sync below very heads up play from Talon. Sink a card. Clearing the arsenal to give space for that sync below to go in there, getting around the Dominate. Dominate's very difficult to make connect against a Riptide who has this many defense reactions. Yeah, absolutely. So once again, Talon denying the on hits that Chris is trying to push through. As Chris will pass his turn. Pitching Boulder Trap. Loading. Ooh. Ooh. Fail, to, fail to load in Codex. Okay. Interesting. <coughs> So he only did that so that he could get the card out of his hand. Yeah, so he could get card. a one cost, exactly. Interesting play. It's like a, a ranger nuance uh -huh. that you can fail to load an arrow and still play out your turn. Very good. And he has that one floating resource. So putting a heat seeker into arsenal, mm. very powerful on hit effect. He already has the ponder, but if this hits, one of the great things about it, I believe, is it puts that card face up. So the Ponder can this is still arsenal. This is another card. time where the Heat Seeker is threatening a six card hand from yeah. Talon. Very threatening here. Chris will have to cover this up completely if he wants to prevent two cards being drawn and put an arsenal from Talon. It definitely feels like at this point in the game, Kasai is no longer on the sands of Volcor. She is bogged down in the Murkmire of the pits. The Murkmire <laughs> of the pits. Fantastic. Mr. Riptide. Looking forward to seeing Merkmeyer make a showing against Enigma soon. All this <laughs> ward coming up. I'm looking forward to actually using Malign and that other r um, stealth card from Mist yes. that does um, ignore damage prevention effects. Love me some ignoring damage prevention, especially given the edge, spike it with frailty uh -huh. or blood rot and Goodbye, Oasis. bye bye prism. And we've got a shunt. No Tunic, which we, he would have loved to use for those very efficient one-cost defense reactions when you have the Tunic counter, but instead pitches a card and covers it completely. Okay, I think I know the play that's coming. He's going to banish the... Um... Oh, maybe he's, he's not. Is he not banishing the attack action? I was going to say, he's, he doesn't want to send the nourishing that he has in Is hand. there a reason that he would choose not to do I that? I guess because he can see that Talon has arsenal, so he doesn't want to fall into that trap again uh -huh. <laughs> oh where he'll i see he might have the option to grab the nourishing if it's available from absolutely the very oh no he he made a mistake and he corrected it okay okay chris oh because he's sending another one right now wow that could have been a huge mistake very nice of talon to um you know allow that uh correction happen very quickly chris you can't run out of stamina this yep. early into swiss this it's game one you need to get to that top eight again and so he, it looks like he pitched a blue, so probably has one floating resource. Um, he has a frailty, but he played this from hand, so it's coming in for six. Same play. Let's see if Talon can navigate around this dominate once again. He holds intoxicating. Hiding shots. that arsenal card from the crowd, we can only speculate that it is not a defense reaction or this would have been a faster choice. He still has a density of traps because he's pitched a lot of the yellows. Sure does, and we can see here these decks are looking about the okay, same take size. Cover. Take cover, reload. This is a fantastic card in this matchup here. And then he oasis. Okay. Gain one life. The reload on a defense react has oh, actually if, come in. If he gives an inertia here, that'll be really good because Chris can't pocket the arsenal. Mm-hmm. Rolling the dice. Let's see what he hits. A blood Rot might do as just as well, actually. Blood Rot, two damage. We love damage. That's how you kill your opponents. Chris is not paying for that Blood Rot. Oh, he will? Oh, it's a yellow. Ah. Pardon me. And so I he simply pays for the Blood Rot and passes the turn. Okay. Giving Talon the tempo, but Riptide, not a hero that can utilize tempo all that well from what we've seen. Just going to be playing a headshot from Arsenal. Coming in, there's that two card seven. Really good value on that card mm. and a break point to threaten. Yeah, Talon's really gaining ground here in the latter half of the game. Yep. 
We It was a 10 health gap. Now it looks to be a 5 health gap. Those traps, one in particular coming in for 3 damage. That was a just huge bomb of a play on defense to be doing that much damage. Yeah, some of these traps have gained like a card or more in, in value on their own, which yeah. is incredible. You know, this has been an interesting match to talk about value, just looking at how many times we've had IP penalties and keeping cards in hand. It seems like w maybe we're not looking so much for, for turn by turn value as we are almost like cyclical card. value. Yeah. yeah, cyclical. Like we need to be very careful not to be spending cards mm. um, out of our deck. Yeah. And that's, that's another thing about these two card sevens is that mm -hmm. in, in a similar way that Guardian would to other decks, yep. your one card to the opponent's two blocking cards, yeah. slowly over time, those cards will add up. Absolutely. So Chris Ayale pitching a yellow, coming in with a Centauri Saber for two. One floating, one card in hand. So he pitched a raise. Talon okay. is going to go straight Hard to reactions. Trap. Talon's probably a bit time conscious because he sees the yeah. clock is at six minutes. Looks like they're speaking to the judge, just making sure they've they're moving at a good pace. Talon will load, present the six card hand, and pass yeah. to Chris. And there's a possibility because they're on stream, they started a little bit late. They may have a little time extension at the yeah, end. Yeah, Connor might be l lenient. And here comes the third playing of a Spoils of War. He grabbed two, but so we expect five total this game. Mm. This is four, go again, make two copper on hit. Ooh, and here we see collapsing. another legendary collapsing trap, one of the Riptide specializations. This card says, when this defends an attack with go again, the attacking hero discards their hand, then draws that many cards minus one. Huge so timing on this. This is one card for three. Yep, and it looks like he is covering up the rest of that with another defense reaction. Oh, another pitfall. Pitfall trap. So Chris is actually going to pay for this one. Yep. Saying, I can't really afford to take any more damage, and three is certainly a lot. Mm. This pitfall traps potentially putting a lot of offensive damage on a defensive card. Covering up six. Chris finally using tunic. I don't. Yeah. I don't even remember how many turns that sat. Um, sat there. It's been a couple. So, activating Kasai, saying, "I really want." Ooh, okay. Ah, so no on hit here. Well, besides the one printed on the card, Kasai's ability only cares about weapons, as does the spoils of war, so he won't be getting any gold. This is still, okay, so Chris has managed to catch Talon yep. by baiting out the two reactions on one chain link and then sent his narrative. Very smart play from Chris. So pushing three Goes and five cards. drawing up to five, yep. As we see, enlightened strike bottom ink card, choosing go, oh, choosing uh, plus two power. He could always go for go again, but he has no resources yeah. to fire. Yeah. So he used a lot of cards to block that turn. So Chris is going to block six, take one damage with three cards in hand for his offensive turn coming up. So he's still sitting okay. And we see him pitching. Now this is interesting, pitching a Blade Flurry. I actually really like this for the second cycle. One mm. of his power cards, one of his game closers just says Two Centauri Saber damage, and I'll pass. Okay. Chris setting up in his own way. Talon gets to retort with the uh, the Sikkim that was put in Arsenal. Yep. Here's four. Four, go again. Go again. Do you have a trap that can <laughs> ping me because I'm sending a go again attack? <laughs> Probably not. Let's see what Chris does here. Looking at his hand, I think I saw a Hold the law. No. Maybe it was an overpower that I was looking at. This is a little awkward because yeah. now he's to his pitch deck and just look how many cards Ooh. are missing. So so few cards left in Chris Ayali's deck. It might not even matter about the life totals and, and a command and conquer on top of that. It might not even matter about these life totals because 
Chris is just out of cards. Yep. He, he has been fatigued. And you can see him start to, you know, he's not so happy about giving two cards here. Still, you know, not very useful to him, so he's going to block with them. But the uh, not to mention the command and conquer on hit, you don't want to. Well, Chad is telling me that he only drew four to nourishing, so uh, maybe Chris. Could be inactive. Yeah. Could be missed. Um, either way, I don't know how much it'll matter. Just, oh, wow, both of these decks are incredibly thin. And Connor's got his watch maybe set to the correct time. Yeah. Our judge there keeping track of the game state, making sure that these players get as much time as they are allowed. No more, no less. Let's yeah. finish this game up. And here we go. Is it another strike. 70 strike? Coming in yeah. for seven. Just throwing those break points, saying, here's one card for me. I'll take two cards from you, and let's just do it again, over and over. Really coming down to the wire. Has blood on her hands. Pretty useless when you have no copper. That's true. Goes in front of that, only blocking it's one card. ability for this part. It looks like Chris is starting to think he oh, needs... Oh, he's got all three glints oh, in wow. hand. <laughs> yeah, two glints, and it looks like a blue... Um, Maybe uh, slice and dice. Going up to his third tunic counter. Not a lot of offensive threat, but I think it looks like he just needs to be able to push damage. All of a sudden, Talon, three life in the lead. Possibly a lead in his deck as yeah. well. I mean, Chris has no choice but to take it because the yeah. deck damage is too much mm -hmm. that he needs to find just some yeah. damage. He needs every by. card that he can to be threatening damage. Oh, but that's really unfortunate. Another, what is that one? A boulder another trap. Another boulder trap. So, yep. Talon would put that on his crown of... Oh, no, on his dynamos. <laughs> okay. Just says, because I don't you, want you, you to you, use those anymore. Yeah, you need two solid turns of not blocking with them yep. and swinging two weapons. So when it defends, you put a minus one counter on, and it pings Ooh. him, I believe, for one. Talon came prepared. So pay two, Pay one, Mr. Ayali, or yep. face ye two damage. Yeah. So there it looks like go. our life totals haven't been updated live yet, but he should have taken two damage from that, actually. And it looks like he's giving up the... No, Chris did pay the one because he, he drew to Glint. Right, but the Talon ability, I think, uh, triggers on both of those. Oh, true. So I, I think Chris should be at yeah. four. Um, not sure about that. I saw him. There it is. Getting okay, we've updated. Got, we've got a time extension here. Okay. There's no time. Pardon me. Oh. I misspoke. Okay, no time extension here. Ugh. A little bit of a mistake on our end. We'll get that corrected as he plays out a Codex of Frailty. Trying to find... I wonder if he still he has a Heat Seeker to send. Yep. I think he just passed one. He doesn't want Heat Seeker. He wants, like, a uh, headshot or something. Okay, so this is the final two turns. Okay, if it's not here, it will be soon. So, looking like a oh, potential Oh, Viridian Touch draw. because... If they... Okay. Can't find lethal. Mm. It's just just a shame, I guess. Yep. Well, that can happen sometimes when you have two sort of fatigue -y decks going up against each other. Um, we'll see. Yeah, just just waiting to kind of hear from our producer about. And it looks like yes. So those were the last two turns, and that will be a draw. Don't play Fatigue Kids, Bagel TCG. And I will say, <laughs> back during the Oldham meta, I loved playing that hero until I played the Oldham Mirror, and it was enough to get me off that hero. I hated drawing so much. I disagree. It's so funny you say that, Got Michael. a Guardian Oldham player Mirrors here. are fantastic. They're fantastic if you can both play fast and get to the end. I mean, that was me versus Craig. That was me versus other Oldhams. And like, how often really would you draw in the Oldham Mirror? Uh, I never drew in an Oldham Never mirror. drew. Amazing. I couldn't I, I say that. I only myself. ever... I've only ever drawn to a Riptide. Yep. When I was Oldham. Okay. I've only ever drawn to uh, a Bravo when I was Oldham. They just threw so much go again at me first cycle. Yes. I just did a bunch of defending. Looks like we've got some opinions in the chat. Hate to see a draw. Fatigue will always be a draw. It looks like you disagree with that, having never drawn as Oldham. But in this case, it was. We'll see 
perhaps these two players can submarine their way to the finals. Otherwise, perhaps. a so draw is tough for them, counting as essentially a loss for each player in the standings. I think we'll move to break Okay. as we get ready for the next yeah. a break, a break, in just break in two minutes. Okay, well, uh, maybe we've got a card we could talk about. Do I don't know do how to use it. Yeah, click how? some buttons until it shows up. <laughs> we're, we're new at this little, we've got a stream deck here that we're learning how to use. <laughs> Let's try, is it can standing? No, don't hit a random button, look at the Michael. standings. Those okay. are, f those. Oh, well, we can talk about this. Charles Dunn looking like our first place in the Players' Championship here. He's we still mentioned sitting earlier, strong, yeah. Yeah, that we were going to be having the Players' Championship, I believe, in the Battle Hardened. Uh, San Diego will be our... our still our earn points our down there, yeah. Yep. 30 points awarded to the winner today, as well as uh, some other number for the top 16, maybe 32. E everyone that's top... Yeah. Top 16 get points, participation points. We love that. I do wish we could find these cards. I want to talk about them so bad. There's the points. It's up here. There it is. Thank you. 25 to runner up. Yep. 20 to third and fourth. Um, the rest of the top eight, 15. And 12 through 9 through 12. Oh, and 12. Then 12. And one for participation. So everybody gets points I've here. I've got a bunch of participation ones. As well list. as these beautiful <laughs> prizes. The winner getting $400, 200 to second, 100 for third through fourth. And fifth through eighth get fifty, just enough to break even on your entry. Um, mm. So, I think maybe this is a good time. F feels like it's like time a break, break okay. time, and we'll, we'll see, see you, you guys all shortly when round two gets paired. See you in a bit, bud.